Well, hello. Hope you have your canvas set up and ready to go. I think we'll do another almighty picture. And today, I want to do a ridge of mountains rather than the jagged, sharp mountains that we've been doing. I want to do a nice, smooth little ridge of mountains coming down into a beautiful little lake. So we'll start off here with a little bit of Prussian blue on the big brush. There we go. Just work it into the bristles. And we'll start right at the top of the canvas. And we'll put us a quick little sky in here. And we'll just move this paint around, let it work and play. Don't want a dead sky. I've already had the magic white on the canvas before I started, so we have that ready. There we go. Just a nice little sky with some life in it. Now I'll put just a touch of phthalo green with my color. And we'll put in some water. There we go. And sort of bring all that together. And we've left a little area open right here in the center so that it'll look like a sheen of light coming across the water. Okay. There you go. Just redecorated your living room. Now, let's take a little bit of the titanium white just a little touch of permanent red in it. I always like to put a little bit of pink into my clouds, just so it looks like a little sunshine. And we'll do some almighty big clouds here. Just let them work off that brush. Keep the brush moving. Keep it moving. You don't want to sit and grind one spot to death. All you'll do is end up with huge cotton balls in the sky. And we want nice fluffy clouds. Leave some of these areas dark. That'll end up being the shadows in your cloud. Okay. There we go. Maybe we'll just have a little cloud floating around up in the sky up here. There we are. Now, maybe another nice little cloud. Put just a little touch more pink with that one. There. Now he stands out. We just want these to be soft little clouds. Okay. Now we'll take the big brush and very gently hypnotize this. Just work it a little bit, leave it alone. If you overwork it, you've killed your cloud and you become a cloud more killer. Ooh, nothing worse than a cloud killer. There. Fluff it up a little. And don't worry if you pull little streaks of paint out when you do that, because when you hypnotize it, it'll go away. There, we'll just hypnotize the whole thing now. Okay, let's clean the brush. There we go. And let's put one more little cloud in there. We'll just have him right here. Just let him work around. If you're going to separate these two clouds, you need the dark area in between. So don't kill all your darker area. And blend him in a little bit, fluff him up, then hypnotize him. Okay. Now let's start working on this ridge of mountains here. And we're going to take a little blue and brown. I want to make sort of a gray color here. Blue, brown, and white. Now your blue is a hundred times stronger than the brown, so use it sparingly. There we go. Now, let's just take and lay us in a nice little ridge here. And we're really pushing this into the canvas. Work it hard. Work him hard. Push. You're not going to hurt that canvas. Just a few little bumps here and there on top. Okay. Really push. 
push that color into the canvas. There. Now we'll take the big brush and we'll pull this downward. There we go. Get rid of all that excess paint. And it's blending with the magic white as you pull it down and automatically it gets lighter in value toward the bottom. just to make it a little bit duller. And over here I'm going to make up a little shadow color and it's brown, white, and a little bit of blue. So we can work back and forth between highlights and shadows. Little bitty, little, little bitty roll of paint on your knife. Almost no paint. We want this to be very subdued. This is, should look almost like cliffs. Just where the light's striking here and there. Okay. A little bit of the shadow color played here and there. I think you'll find that doing these kind of mountains are a little more difficult than the other ones we were doing. We used more paint. These are almost non-existent when it comes to paint. Okay. Then we'll take the big brush and diffuse this, make it even softer, push it even farther back. Like so. Really pushing back. Maybe we'll put a little ridge coming right around here, sort of. There we go. You could spend all day just playing with mountains, and it's a super, super way to learn. So if you have an old canvas around, take it and just do nothing but mountains on it, the whole thing. It really, really will make a friend of that knife by the time you're finished. And it'll help you to understand mountains. Everybody's not as fortunate as I can live in Alaska where you can look out your window and view mountains that most people only see in pictures. All righty, let's bring this down. Maybe we'll just have it come right into here. If you don't have mountains outside of your window, you can buy a lot of books that have pictures in it and examples. And after a very short period of time, you'll begin making these up in your own mind. You no longer have to worry about copying, but copying is a way to start. And here we're trying to give you something just sort of as a guideline to go by and to make your own vision and to put it on canvas. So don't worry about trying to copy exactly what I'm doing here. Do what you want to do. Put your feelings into it, your heart. It's your world. Okay. And maybe a few little things here and there. A few little shadows. Just change some of these angles here a little. There we go. I like it better. So it's your mountain. You can change it. You can change it any way you want him to be. 
I'm going to put some little shadows here and there just to make some little projections coming out. Wherever you want them. Okay. Now, let's diffuse this. Lay them in the mist here. Very soft. Now let's take a little magic white. A little magic white. We need a thinner paint. If we're going to make some happy little clouds that just sort of float down over the mountain here. And maybe we'll just take this one right here and just let him float right on down over the mountain. Now, it's essential that you have a thick paint on first. It is essential, absolutely necessary. Or all you do is make mud here. And maybe there's a little cloud just floating right down through there. Okay. We need to just lay these clouds where we want them. I think maybe this one comes down over here, too. Very thin paint. I can't stress that enough. Now, we'll very, very gently, a hair just about touches, not quite, just about. There we go. And then we'll hypnotize it ever so lightly. Super, super lightly. There. See how easy it is to put clouds just dripping right over the mountain? Okay. Now then, let's take, let's take a little sap green and a little brown mixed together. Okay, let's see here. Let's take, oh, got a big old hair laying right there on the brush. If you get a hair on the canvas, just take the corner of your brush and lift it right off. No big deal. If you take your finger and start picking, you'll destroy your whole picture trying to get that one little son of a gun off there. Now, we'll just lay in some color here. Maybe I'll add just a little touch of blue to that. Yeah, I like that better. There we go. Okay. Now then, we can take and grab a hold of a little bit of that, pull it down. Instant reflections. Instant reflections. Pull that across. Okay. Now we can highlight a little bit. And we'll take a little bit of the magic white. A little yellow. And a touch of phthalo green. Nice bright little green here. And we'll lay in some nice little things happening all over the place. There we go. Okay, let's reflect a little bit of that color right down into the water here. Now, let's mix up some blue and some brown and some sap green. And you want this very dark. It looks black. And we'll use the almighty fan brush today. Make some little trees in the background. We've used just about every brush here. So just show you how you can make some beautiful little trees with this. And you just sort of let them fall off the brush. Back and forth, shape your tree, and lay them in there. Maybe we'll put one a little higher. That way we'll put the cloud, that little cloud that's floating in front of the mountain. We'll put him behind the tree. There we go. 
These are fun little trees to make. Just let them happen. Okay, maybe one over here. His top got bent a little bit. Maybe the airplane went too close and clipped him. In Alaska, that's not unusual. They have some crazy old bush pilots up there that run over everything. A friend of mine brought back a 12-foot tree hanging on his back of his airplane. Okay, maybe a little baby went over here. Okay. Then we'll just pull that down into the reflections, very gently. Like so. All right. Now we'll take some magic white and a little bit of Van Dyke brown. A little touch of yellow. Just to make sort of a dirt color, sandy little color. And we'll lay in some little water lines back here. And maybe we'll have a little beach comes down. There. Let this run around the corner. Okay, there he goes. I want to take a dry brush and we'll lift this just a touch. This is a thinner paint so it'll move on top of the other without destroying. just some straight magic white and we'll sparkle this up a little bit. Okay. We'll put a few little sticks and stems here and there. Okay, time to move forward in this picture. We'll mix this up a little more dark color. Okay. Let's put some paint on the one inch brush and build us another tree here. Maybe we got a nice evergreen that's growing right up through here. There he goes. Just let him drip out of the brush. And we'll give him a little friend. Now, let's just put some little bushy trees right in here, like this. Some little reflections underneath. Pull those down. Okay. And we'll put some little trunk indicators just here and there. Now we can highlight that. And we'll throw a nice little green bush right here. There's a nice little tree. Reflect those right down into the water. And give them a little pull. Okay. A little Van Dyke brown. And we'll put some soil in here. And we'll just sort of let this come around.
then a little brown and white. I'll highlight him. Make him look like stones and stuff. A few little bushes that travel down. There we go. There we go. Okay. Okay, we'll put a little water line under here. And this is still water, so it has to be flat. All these lines have to be straight. Go anywhere you want to go with them, but they have to basically be straight, or your water's going to run out of your pitcher. You're going to have to get a bucket and put under one in. Let's put a few little sticks here and there. All right. Now, let's take some brown and do this. Just let this go. Really pushing that into the canvas. Really pushing it. Okay. And we'll take a little white, a little brown. A little touch of blue into it here. And we'll just do this. Turn into some nice dirt area. Okay. Now then, let us build a tree right here. Nice tree. There we go. This is just our dark color that we've used before. Blue and brown, a little sap green. Maybe we need a little bush right in here somewhere, just to break it up. A little bush out here. Maybe we'll put a little bush right there. Okay. Put in some little trunks. Like so. And we'll put some little highlights on here. Some little things happening on this bush. Okay. And we'll have some little bushes over here. have a little path that sort of just comes through here. Just a little dark area. We'll bring that down to it. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Let's have a nice tree right here. right up through here, maybe. Put his other side on. Don't want a one-sided tree. Okay, we go down through here. Just let him fall in, wherever. Maybe a little one there. Give him a little highlight. Yeah, we'll take our dark color and yeah, we'll put some leaves on that little rascal.
just take a little more color and we'll highlight these. Maybe we'll put a nice bright little tree right here. And a few little things down here. This sort of gives it the indication that the land works down that way. Okay. Now I want to put a few little sticks all throughout here. We're just cutting through the paint here. Okay, now we'll take a dark color, and I've used a thin oil here. And maybe we'll put a few little things that are just sort of laying around out like so. Just here and there, wherever you'd like them. This is your creation. Then we need to have a old dead limb here and there. Okay, maybe I'll just mix up a, a dark, dark green here. We'll just put a few little highlights on these trees to indicate little lights playing on those. There we go. Okay, I think we'll sign that one, and that one should be just about finished. There we are. I really hope you have enjoyed this painting. I hope yours is complete also. If not, I hope you'll be with us next time. And until we meet again, happy painting. Thank you very much.